All right. Cannot wait to play some Team Crystal. Help. Where the hell is Crystal? Crystal! Where the hell did you go? What in the hell is going? Hello, Shadow. I want to play a game. That game is not going to be Smash Brothers, is it? For years, you have knowingly subjected yourself to bad video games for the entertainment of others and allowed your care for yourself to lapse. To maintain your sanity, you keep pillows of an anthropomorphic Lady Fox on hand for a sense of camaraderie. I have now relieved you of this crutch for your test. Win the game, and your furry paramour will be returned to you in brand new condition. Fail, and your mind will not be the last thing that you lose. The game in question is Saw on the Xbox 360. Do I have to watch the movies as research? Yes. Shit! Saw is a series of horror films about Jigsaw, a serial killer who kidnaps people and puts them into death traps that require gruesomely maiming themselves to escape. Because he wants to make people cherish their lives, or he thinks that it rehabilitates criminals, this series has a lot of retcons. The original Saw movie is a masterpiece, a truly harrowing and utterly haunting psychological horror film with some brilliant performances, only held back by its low budget rearing its ugly head a few times, while the sequels are pretty much extremely gory slasher films that regularly check in on the cops actually trying to stop the slasher for a change. I really liked Saw 1 and 2. I didn't like 3 because almost all the focus is on a character I couldn't stand. 6 has some great trap sequences and is fun for not even trying to be subtle about its hatred of the health insurance industry pre-Obamacare. And the rest are decent slashers with good pacing that I'm just not really inclined to revisit. Part of the problem is that each new Saw film is obsessed with revisiting every prior film in the series to fill in new details, regardless of how much it bogs down the film in progress. Regardless, Saw was hugely popular in the mid to late 2000s, and during the height of the series' popularity, a Saw video game was put into production by Brash Entertainment. You may know Brash from previous review subject Jumper Griffin's story, because Brash was known for hoovering up every cheap movie license that they could find. But Brash went out of business and Saw was picked up by Konami, who ordered a litany of massive changes to the game because, and I could not make this up if I tried, Konami wanted an entire Saw franchise to be their spiritual successor to Silent Hill. Silent Hill is one of the most beloved horror franchises in history, and Konami was literally, Nah, let's replace one of our biggest IPs with movie licensed games about an old guy with a puppet that puts people in bear traps. I'm sure we're in great hands, though. The game was developed by Zombie Studios, developers of... Never heard of it? Never heard of it? Never heard of it? Oh, a barely working Ninja Turtles knockoff motion game that re res reviewed on a show called The Worst Ever. Ah, crap. In the first Saw movie, Danny Glover plays Detective David Tapp, who finds one of Jigsaw's hideouts only for him to escape and kill Tapp's partner. This makes Tapp lose his fudge and grow completely obsessed with catching Jigsaw to the point of stalking proven innocent people. The movie ends implying that Tapp is dead, but surprise! Jigsaw picked him up, healed that gaping bullet wound in his chest, and has locked him in an abandoned asylum. Now Jigsaw has prepared an entire building's worth of traps, victims, and ironic lessons to try and cure Tap of his obsession and give him a new lease on life. If the literal thousands of death traps don't kill him first. You're gonna have to forgive that Tap doesn't look, act, or sound a thing like Danny Glover from the movie. The devs couldn't get the rights to his likeness. Although given the rest of the game, too cheap to pay for the rights might have been more accurate. So then the game starts, and the environment is freaking terrifying, man! You're locked in a dark, abandoned, collapsing asylum, and your only light source is a tiny lighter that barely does anything. The place is crawling with prisoners that are out for your blood because Jigsaw's implanted you with a key that they need to escape. You take damage near constantly from stepping on broken glass that's damn near impossible to see. The place is infested with tripwires that'll set off shotgun traps and blow your head off at a moment's notice. Doors at random will be rigged with traps that kill you if you miss a quick time event. At any time you could be sealed inside a trap room with bombs that'll kill you if you don't act fast. And on top of it all, Jigsaw's trademark henchman the Pigman is stalking you the entire time that you play. It's a very oppressive and scary environment. 
Uh, until my first gameplay session consisted of me wandering empty halls for 48 minutes while nothing the hell happened! You figure out pretty quickly that nothing actually tries to kill you unless it's telegraphed way in advance. You'll hear enemies rambling incessantly long before they attack, traps are given away either with visible timers off in the distance or with cutscenes, and Pigman literally only attacks you twice before the endgame, both times in cutscenes where the game just needs an excuse to warp you somewhere. And the game drops a checkpoint every few rooms, so even if you do die in a puzzle room you couldn't figure out or trip a shotgun trap, well, who cares? You just respawn right at the puzzle for another try at it. The tripwires and booby trap doors are just friggin' annoying more than anything. The game's environments have good atmosphere, but it's little more than good wallpaper when the gameplay isn't doing jack to back it up. The vast majority of the game's puzzles boil down to, you come to a locked door, search until you find the key. So you go around checking drawers and dead bodies for the key, and on the way you may have a few balance minigames, some lockpicking minigames, a few decrepit walls to smash through, and a few tripwires. SHIT! Sometimes instead of a key, it'll be a combination lock to where you have to line up mirrors or look all over for the combination, or it'll be a power coupling that opens a fuse box puzzle that opens the locked door. Results the same, need key, find key, move forward. The fuse boxes have you rotate wires until all the red terminals are connected to power, and it's a damn good thing I already had this as an app on my phone, because you'll be doing this exact puzzle a lot! Sometimes to get the key you'll need to reach into a toilet full of used needles or a vat of acid, which are actually pretty easy, because 9 times out of 10 the stupid ass game will spawn the key directly in your hand as soon as you start. And no, how Tap's arm is not hamburger meat by the end of the game is never explained. Sometimes Jigsaw locks you in a room with dynamite so you have to find the key or combination on a time limit, and every now and then you- COCKSUCKER! Every now and then Jigsaw locks you in a room of poison gas and you have to search everything for a valve and do a rotating puzzle to siphon off the gas. These take like two seconds to figure out, but a good chunk of the time you're just barely given enough time before the gas kills you! And no joke, I've just gone through about every trap and puzzle in the game. That's kind of it. And if you're thinking that these traps are total weak sauce for friggin' Jigsaw, you're right, but rest assured, they do eventually break out bigger guns. Each level is focused on you having to rescue a hostage from a huge signature trap from the Saw franchise, complete with a Jigsaw monologue actually voiced by Tobin Bell from the movies introducing each trap. I want to play a game. You damaged your body with drugs and pain. Now the needle. Save your, life. your first victim is Amanda, a drug addict who survived Jigsaw and turned witness that Tap failed to protect, but Jigsaw has re-kidnapped her because she relapsed into drug use. Jigsaw's got her hooked up to a chair with needles injecting her with poison, and Tap has to climb into the same, and if either takes the wrong antidote, they'll die! Oh man, that's intense! How do you escape this fiendish trap?! You operate a glorified Plinko machine to drop colored balls left or right. And the puzzle is so badly laid out that the solution is just change colors every drop. I grew up with the Clue Finders games for 3rd, 4th, and 5th graders, and they all had vastly better puzzles than this. Also, I think it's safe to say that the devs didn't actually watch Saw 3, who can blame them, because Amanda is supposed to be working for Jigsaw by the game's time frame, so he strapped his own henchman into this trap that will kill her if Dap screws up! Jeez, talk about a crappy job interview. Afterward, Amanda starts following you around and talks over some damn Jigsaw tapes, and after about a minute of wondering if this is some new gameplay mechanic, she just up and leaves. Gets grabbed by the pig man. Why do they give you AI followers that do nothing and drop off after a whole minute? I don't know. So yeah, the vast majority of the game is spent wandering through empty hallways looking for keys, sometimes looking for keys in a time limit, and every now and then solving puzzles that Batman Activity Center would laugh at. I'd record game sessions 40 to 50 minutes at a time, having to pause and take two or three notes of actual traps because nothing friggin' happened the entire rest of the video! I guess it's true to the movies, there'll usually be downtime between traps where a subject is just walking to the next set piece, but the movies will use that time to follow up on other plot threads and a police investigation. Stuff's always happening! 
The best you get for alternate plot lines in the game is finding hundred year old notes from the ancient asylum telling you how shitty medical care used to be, and all of it is meaningless bullcrap completely unrelated to anything. The majority of the game really is a walking simulator made before walking simulators were a thing. And I admit my only exposure to the genre has been the utterly brilliant Abzu and the utterly garbage Flowers Are Dead, but walking sims tend to be much shorter than Saw's torturously padded out seven hour ass, and they tend to tell actual stories. This game has nothing going for it but atmosphere and fan service, and trust me, neither gets you very far when there's little to no gameplay backing them up. The combat is completely broken, and it's not that utterly suicidal, avoid at all costs kind of broken that horror games employ to fill their theme and tone. I mean, the cakewalk zero effort, why did you even bother including it kind of broken. You get loads of weapons to pick up, but Tap can't handle any kind of weapon without winding up for a damn hour for every individual swing. Your attacks are so damn slow that it'll be pure chance to land any hits, but I quickly discover that if you hold B and block an attack, it kicks off a quick time event sequence that insta-kills whatever you're fighting. Yeah, combat boils down to a few piss-easy button prompts. There are a few different kinds of enemies, but they're all crap. Some burst into flames when you kill them. whoop de shit I have plenty of time to kill them and then back away. There are so-called berserkers with traps on their heads or needles in their eyes, but I didn't notice them to be any more aggressive than regular enemies, and plus they're blind! The first time I ran into one, I blew through them like it was- WHAT THE HELL?! Do the berserkers have head explodey powers? What the hell- OH YOU PIECE OF SHIT FREAKING INVISIBLE SHOTGUN TRIPWIRES! Very rarely you'll find an enemy with a shotgun collar to where if you're near them for too long your head explodes, but those are easy too. Run away for a few seconds and the enemy's head explodes first, and failing that it only takes a few seconds to kill a guy hand to hand. You're fine. And some people have Venus flytrap masks to where their heads explode after they've already died, and dead serious, I don't think they do anything special. And the sad thing is, combat is clearly meant to be a major part of the game. You're encouraged to re-rig shotgun tripwires and tactically use fuses to electrify pools of water, lure enemies into traps of your own, or tactically bolt and barricade doors to avoid combat wherever possible. And you can craft crude grenades to stun or kill enemies if you're desperate. And you will use exactly none of these systems. Especially once you figure out the game's dirty little secret. Near as I can tell, you can't drop weapons, so it might take you a while to stumble across this, but in level 3, I tried going into combat without a weapon, and... <laughs> Tap is a martial arts beast, yo! He throws punches really fast, his punches stun lock all enemies, and you can take on any of the game's enemies barehanded, even the berserkers where you're punching them in the metal box on their head. You will utterly curb stomp every single enemy in the game as long as you go into combat unarmed. And it bears repeating, Konami wanted this to replace Silent Friggin' Hill. And what makes the combat even more pointless is that in addition to instant use healing items that are spread throughout the levels, you can find hypo needles that heal you to near full health with each use. And no joke, already early into level 2, my inventory was maxed out on hypos to the point I had to pass up the vast bulk of healing items that I ran into. I ain't seen that shit since Escape from Bug Island! Also... Really? I can't fit more than three tiny nails for lockpicking into my inventory at a time? Are you shitting me? Today on Mythbusters, can the human body carry more than three nails at once? Oh. Oh, holy. Oh, holy shit. I, this is... This is amazing. The song game was lying to me. I think this game might have been full of crap. Ah oh, shit, now there's nails on the ground and I have to look for them, I'm gonna step on them, crap. So most of the game is looking for keys in empty halls, puzzles that are barely even puzzles, and combat that wasn't designed to be any kind of a challenge. In other words, there is barely a game here- BITCH BALLS! The game tries to inject some openness and exploration. There will be optional doors that you can lockpick for extra items or gear puzzles that you can solve for extra weapons. Crap that I near constantly stumbled across on accident because the entire game is built around trying to figure out where you're supposed to go. The bulk of the items are so surplus or unnecessary that the added rooms just clog up the design and make navigation confusing. 
And there's a second pause menu that gives you a map of the stage, but it's so scrunched down and full of dead ends, this map is completely worthless. The game has a lot of programming errors. Not only did I see near constant screen tearing, but the enemy AI seems to botch up a lot. I've had what I presume to be enemies just run away from me babbling nonsense or fail to spawn at all after reloading a checkpoint. Near the end, I had an enemy where the block just refused to work for no apparent reason, and those traps that you can craft? Yeah, good luck. The stun trap did absolutely nothing when I tried it, and the poison gas trap did less than nothing. Using it fills the whole damn room with gas, and every time I tried using it, it killed me! There are three light sources that you can pick up to illuminate dark areas, a lighter that only lights up a small area around you, and a flashlight that has a great distance but only lights up a narrow channel to where you can barely see. My jigsaw trap would be to lock every horror game dev in a pitch dark room covered with Lego bricks and barefoot until every last one of them learns and appreciates how a goddamn flashlight works! You can also pick up a camera that sucks balls! The camera briefly lights up a good distance at a wide range, but it also screws with the visual so that the whole damn screen goes blurry, you can't see what you're doing, and the light only lasts a fraction of a second anyway. This thing is only here as a reference to an iconic scene from the first movie, in case you want to reenact the part where Adam can't see what the hell he's doing and gets jumped by the boogeyman! Level 2 is about rescuing SHIT! Level 2, you're rescuing a crooked cop who accidentally killed a man while drunk driving and he framed an innocent bum for it. And Jigsaw blames Tap for this, because Tap wanted to actually arrest someone for the hit and run, so the cop did the frame up to save his own ass. Jigsaw is pissed that Tap was doing his job. I don't get the lesson here. Anyways, the boss trap has the guy in a descending bladed pendulum, and to solve it is... Just a copy of the gear turning puzzles that you have to do to open weapon cases. Nonsense motives and recycled traps. Isn't it a little bit early to stop trying? Level 3, you need to rescue Melissa, the wife of Tap's dead partner, Detective Singh, who died in the movie when he went chasing after fleeing Jigsaw and hit a shotgun tripwire. But Jigsaw's all like, oh no, I didn't kill Detective Singh, because he would never have stepped on that tripwire if Tap hadn't raided my hideout. Much the same way that if I point a gun at your head and pull the trigger, it is your fault you died for not dodging it. Jigsaw spends this whole damn level lecturing Tap that his obsession got his partner killed, when that's not really what happens in the movie. Yeah, they go in without backup, but Tap's obsession doesn't really take hold until after Singh is dead. I get Jigsaw the wackadoo serial killer is not a reliable source of information, but he yammers the same point so many times that it feels like the game itself is misremembering the first movie. Although granted, it wouldn't be the first time. He ran into a trap. I did not kill him. Yeah, Singh died to a trap. A trap that you put there and lured him into with the explicit intention of murdering him! You asshole! The defenses I prepared would have easily been disabled by police procedure. Jigsaw is extra full of shit on that one because he takes out a whole squad of cops who are following procedure in Saw 2. And the killer is, we find out that Singh's wife tried to sue Tap for getting his partner killed. How is the wife dumb enough not to blame her cop husband's death on the serial killer who murdered him? Did duty kill Detective Singh or you? You rigged a shotgun to blow his head off! Butt munch! Much the same way that if I light you on fire, I can't say, Hey, it's not my fault he didn't stop, drop, and roll. Detective Singh killed by his partner's obsession. Killed by serial killer who was resisting arrest, forcing Singh to do his job and run down a hallway that said killer booby trapped because he's a fucking serial killer! Look at the true destroyer of lives. Yeah, says the man who kidnapped dozens of people, threatened their lives if they don't try to murder Tap, and orchestrated situations where Tap is forced to murder dozens of anonymous, possibly innocent people to survive the situation you put them in! Sure, Jigsaw's targets in the movies are mostly criminals, but he's also gone after people for working too hard, smoking, or just being on antidepressants. Odds are pretty good that you're butchering innocent people. 
But I'm not joking, the game yells at you that everything's your fault at least a dozen friggin' times. And when you find out that Jigsaw's pissed at Melissa because she abandoned her son to wallow in her grief, she blames Tap for that too! In fact, all the victims you come across and rescue blame Tap for them being held in the asylum, and not the certifiably insane serial killer WHO PUT THEM THERE! Anyway, Melissa's trap has her shackled between two jaws lined with buzz saws, and you have to solve three sliding block puzzles where not getting perfect answers on each one kills her. And gosh, that would be just... just tragic. God, compared to Jigsaw's traps in the movies, these minigame puzzles are lame! It'd be like if in the Batman you had the Riddler's Riddle linked to a cipher revealing the word drive as a clue to check his garage for a car with a literal thumb drive in it, and then the follow-up was Batman having to play a round of solitaire on his phone. Anyway, you save Melissa, and then a minute later she leaves you anyway. You deserve this. He said if I made it this far, I could choose to leave. I'm leaving. I'm not sorry. Yeah, this was the point where I decided to test whether the game punishes you for attacking the NPC victims that you rescue. It doesn't! I have had it up to here with yo bullshit! <laughs> Level 4 is where the game really starts to get repetitive. You stop running into new traps, just the same two or three valve and circuit puzzles you've already done a dozen times, copied and pasted over and over. The gameplay never escalates or changes. You could seriously rearrange these levels in any random order, and not only would the difficulty curve go pretty much unchanged, the story wouldn't change either, since there's no actual narrative, just find a new hostage unconnected to the others. There's one weak-ass puzzle where the solution is just closing a door to find the combination to a lock. How much of a time crunch was Jigsaw under when he DAMN TRAP DOORS?! The boss traps get lazier too. There's a backbreaker rack that'll bend its victim over backwards unless you do four copy-paste circuit puzzles or three copy-paste valve puzzles identical to the dozens of each that you've done just in the main levels. Oh, I'm sorry, there is one new trap, a glorified sliding block puzzle to open a door, but the perspective is so screwy that it's hard to even tell what you're doing or what your goal is. Even the victims get lazy. Level 4 is a journalist that pissed Jigsaw off by writing about him, and level 5 is a guy who sought Jigsaw out for a test because he didn't have anything better to do. I thought this was about teaching Tap an ironic lesson through his own victims. Did Jigsaw just not realize that that was a really short list when he got started? What's funny is the reporter guy starts following you around at the start of the next level, but he goes off on his own to explore and immediately gets bisected by a wall trap. Utterly tragic. Until you realize that Chudhead was leaving to investigate a dead end with nowhere to go! Brilliant! And speaking of bisection, wanna see Tap glitch into a wall? Although one cool thing that happened was I decided to crack open a weapons vault and try out a revolver. The gun is good! This thing just insta-kills about five enemies before it runs empty, which means it'll carve through most of an entire level. Great game balancing! And speaking of game balance, level 5 has a trap room where you have a rotating valve puzzle and two gigantic circuit puzzles to solve in seven and a half minutes. Look at this! Hope you're practiced up, douchebag! And just to prove that I did, in fact, watch the movies as research, Level 5 has you rescue a guy named Obi from a trap where he's placed into a furnace to gradually burn to death. A lot like how the movie Saw 2 has a different character named Obi who is lured into a furnace to gradually burn to death. And that's not even the only trap that they borrow from the movies, it's just the most blatant one. Level 2's Pendulum Boss Trap borrowed from Saw 4. A lowering body to electrify a pool of water? Saw 4, a brief puzzle where you'd knock pigs into a meat grinder to fill a chamber with their guts, borrowed from Saw 3. A puzzle room where there are crap loads of numbers and you need to find a combination, heavily based on the original, and also feels like pure friggin' luck to solve. The toilet full of needles is ganked from Saw 2, and the shotgun collar and a key in a vat of acid are ganked from Saw 3. Tap is locked into a freezer and sprayed with water, also borrowed from Saw 3. 
The bombs in all the trapped rooms are taken from Saw 5, which was the most recent release at the time. The shotgun trip wires are taken from the original, and you'll find random NPCs with the Venus flytrap mask from Saw 2. Now, you could argue that this is all just fan service, paying homage to the movies, except a lot of Saw fans watch these movies for the sick, twisted, and clever new traps, and the Backbreaker and Saw Jaws are really the only new ones for the video game. And they're not even that clever, because Tap stops them by playing stupid-ass children's app puzzle minigames. I get you can't have a player character mutilate themselves for every puzzle in a 7-hour game, you'd have no player character left at a certain point, but the result is this really just doesn't feel like Jigsaw's MO in the first place. This just wasn't the way to do a Saw game. By level 6, the game has completely given up. There are a grand total of two trapped rooms, each with all of one basic recycled puzzle, and a small handful of enemies the entire level. The map is friggin' barren. You have a dull fetch quest for three light bulbs to light up a combination, but each bulb can cycle through three numbers, and I guess you just screw around with it until the game marks the solution for you? And when you get to the end, the trap is a card-flipping memory game. That thing that's included as a disposable minigame on every children's game ever. And even with that low starting point, they didn't even try to make this minigame playable. You don't get a look at the board beforehand, and you only get five misses before the hostage is killed. Five misses on a 4x4 board, and just to make sure the damn puzzle is extra trial and error, you eventually realize that the pictures don't actually match up. You have to match items that go together, like pills with a pill bottle or a hacksaw to a severed foot. You're going to lose several times before you figure out how this works. This is such friggin' lazy design! Well, Detective, I didn't actually think you'd survive this long, so I kind of fought you through these last few levels. Hope you don't mind. Hostage number six is Jeff, the hostage from the first movie who was still suicidal after Jigsaw's game, and every time you miss a match, he gets a spike put through him. But once you free the guy... That looked... painful. Are you bleeding? Dude! Dude! You just saw him get three giant iron spikes punched all the way through his body! You pulled him off a table that is plainly still soaked with his own fresh blood! Are you bleeding? It's no friggin' wonder you weren't a good detective! The final level of the game, Jigsaw's apprentice slash helper the Pigman comes to kill you, and he's holding a key that you need to finally escape. You'll need to set traps, lure him exactly where you need, utilize everything you've learned across the entire game in a thrilling final climactic boss fight. It's the ultimate game of cat and mouse! What happens in cat and mouse if the cat is retarded? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Completely unarmed, I was able to circle strafe and punch the final boss to death with virtually zero resistance. Though on the bright side, this did utilize everything I've learned across the entire game. And the funny thing is, after I handed Pigman's ass to him and caved in his skull with my bare hands, I walk out into this huge open area with multiple traps that you were supposed to use to whittle his health down gradually. And Jigsaw jumps on the PA to shout words of encouragement, having completely failed to notice that his right-hand man is dead. He is vulnerable in situations like this. Use your surroundings to end his game. And then the dense bastard tries to guilt you for murdering a rampaging psychopath in self-defense. Also, yeah, what is this, the third or fourth Pigman of the series who's completely anonymous and gets murdered with no explanation? Can't wait to have a whole movie interrupting itself to explain this moron's origins and how they secretly tie into every single one of the movies. At the end of the game, Tap can go through one of two doors. You can pick Freedom, where he frees a bunch of remaining hostages and gets to leave, or Truth, where he gives into his obsession to confront Jigsaw like he's always wanted. In the Freedom ending, Tap is hailed as a hero for saving tons of lives, but he can't live with the guilt and obsession of having let Jigsaw go, and he commits suicide. The second game makes it clear that this is the canon ending, plus the fifth movie had already established that he was dead. In the Truth ending, Tap catches Jigsaw, only to find out that it's actually Melissa, on orders to impersonate Jigsaw for her son's safety. Melissa dies to a shotgun tripwire much like her husband did, which causes Tap a complete mental breakdown, leaving off with him in an asylum hallucinating that he's in Jigsaw's traps forever. 
So, sunshine and rainbows all around. See, this is why I like Friday the 13th. Jason doesn't play with his food, and if you survive, you get to go on with your life. The Saw video game is frustrating. It clearly has a lot of love for the movies, not only getting Tobin Bell back to voice the whole game, but filling the game with references to the films and copying the film's trademark editing and structure, right down to the shocking twist reveal and the truth ending. And the story and tone do fit pretty perfectly in with the series, aside from a few wild lore inconsistencies. So I could see people enjoying the game for its fan service, but you can get everything there is to experience from watching a long play on YouTube, because this damn game has, like, barely any gameplay to speak of, and what little it has is crap. Between lame puzzles, pitiful combat, and mountains of basically dead air, you barely do anything. About every trap is just find the key or solve the same three copied puzzles on a time limit, and it gets stale long before the game is over. While I question adapting Saw into a survival horror game instead of like an adventure puzzle setup, it would have helped if it had been a good survival horror game. Maybe this sequel will get it right. I have a feeling Billy the Douchebag here is gonna make me do that one too in the future. All in due time. You have yet to face your true test, but for now the game is over. No, no, you wait here, you son of a bitch! What did you do with Krista?! With the game, your furry paramour will be returned to you in brand new condition. Brand new condition. Oh. Crystal. Easy girl, I gotcha. I gotcha. Bring the noise. <laughs>